Good with that? Okay. So now we're going to talk about just some just basic ideas on some common health conditions, just so you can get an idea of how conventional medicine would approach it and how I would as a naturopath. So first, high blood pressure, very common condition out there. So understand some of the basic ideas behind blood pressure. We have a closed system in terms of our vessels in the body, and it's full of a fluid, our blood. If we get more fluid than that space allows, blood pressure goes up, or if the, the vessels that hold this fluid constrict, we get increase in blood pressure. So most conventional medicine treatment of blood pressure is all about trying to regulate, often it's regulating the output of fluid out of the body through the kidneys by regulating how much water is absorbed or how much sodium is absorbed in the body. If you can get the body to excrete more sodium, more water will follow it, so you somewhat kind of dehydrate the body, okay? Or we'll do things that'll dilate vessels or control the contractility of the heart. I mean, the heart's the pump, and that generates the pressure. If you can kind of regulate that, keep that heart rate down, it won't beat as hard, and that'll keep the blood pressure down. So that's the conventional approach. Kind of given what I've talked about naturopathically, you can kind of get a sense that's kind of downstream mechanism. We are worrying about stuff after the problem has developed. So naturopathically, we start asking questions like, well, why would someone have high blood pressure in the first place? Maybe they have a lot of sodium in their diet, and they're retaining a lot of water because of that. Maybe they have a lot of stress. Stress releases some hormones called epinephrine and norepinephrine. They can cause what we call vasoconstriction or constriction of your blood vessels. So that reduces the capacity or the size of the vessels to hold on the blood. So that will raise blood pressure up. Um, maybe we have an inflammatory condition, whether it's systemic or local. Inflammation will cause retention of water in the body, which will naturally rise blood pressure. So naturopathy, I'd be looking at things like that. What's their diet like? Is it pro-inflammatory? What's their stress level like? What's their job like? Are they constantly under stress, meaning high levels of those stress hormones that constrict the vessels in their body? Um, magnesium is probably most, one of the most common mineral deficiencies. Magnesium is necessary for relaxation of smooth muscles. Smooth muscles line all of our vessels in our body. So maybe it's a simple deficiency in magnesium that can be related to those constricted vessels. And we do a little supplementation with some magnesium. Okay. So to get an idea of how naturopathic medicine would approach heart, high blood pressure a little differently than conventional medicine. Okay. The next one is diabetes and metabolic syndrome. syndrome. Metabolic syndrome and diabetes, that is probably the health epidemic that's, that's affecting all modern Western countries. Metabolic syndrome is a combination of high blood pressure, um, elevated cholesterol and triglycerides, um, elevated blood sugar, and um, adiposity or weight gain. Um, most of the treatment re related to this is using anti-diabetic type drugs and cholesterol drugs and hypertensive drugs. Okay? The, the, the uh, diabetic drug, the um, hypertension drugs work that we just talked about, the diabetic drugs kind of work downstream of trying to, um, it, it's, it's treating the, I'm going to explain the, I'm going to explain the diabetes in a second. The um, cholesterol drugs, simply you're shutting down metabolic pathways that prevent the manufacture of the cholesterol. Okay. But we first have to ask, well, as a naturopath, why does the body have elevated cholesterol? Why does the body have elevated blood sugars? The first thing you think about is dietary issues. So any patient I work with that has diabetes or metabolic syndrome, we sit down and we do a dietary and we go over that because that is in 90, if not 100% of the cases, the primary cause of, these, of this syndrome. Um, when the body has elevated blood sugar, the solution is not giving a drug that helps the body secrete more insulin, which is a hormone that allows the body to lose glu use glucose in the blood. The solution is how can we adjust the diet so the body doesn't have high levels of glucose. That's it. I talked a little bit of physiology there. Is that, did I lose anybody on that? No? Okay. Okay. Um, so again, it's working upstream to figure out why does the body have this problem in the first place. Okay. Um, the last one is joint pain. And this is all types of joint pain and um, arthritis in general. Um, I'm going to talk about one type that most all of us will experience sometime in our life. That is osteoarthritis, or called the um, mature arthritis, as opposed to an inflammatory arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis. Um, osteoarthritis is associated with the breakdown of, this, of the, um, the synovium and the capsule in your joints, typically on large weight-bearing joints. That happens as people age. Probably the most common cause for osteoarthritis is just excess weight. 
you know, our bones are made to withstand a normal uh, body weight. Um, if we have a lifetime of being overweight and um, um, putting our, our joints into higher pressure than they're used to, that'll cause um, unusual wear and tear in those joints. So the first solution is trying to, to address it by addressing weight. Um, I have a handout in there on something called prolotherapy. Prolotherapy is something many naturopaths and, and I do. It's an injection technique that helps joint pain, and particularly things like osteoarthritis. From a prolotherapy standpoint, joint pain can be related to laxity or looseness to ligaments that hold joints together. Um, ligaments, they're designed to keep our joint in the normal range of motion or normal plane of motion if through acute trauma or just normal wear and tear, we get laxity to some of these ligaments. It allows more play or movement in our joints. Prolotherapy is an injection technique that you go in and you, you trigger a controlled inflammatory process to cause the body to release more blood and growth factors into the area of, of the damaged ligaments that allows the body to heal up those ligaments and tighten up the joint and restore the joint back to normal motion. There's a little more detail to it, but it's all in that little handout there. But that's a perfect example of a kind of technique. Rather than using a steroid injection or painkillers or whatnot, you're doing something that's trying to initiate the body's own ability to heal the cause of the joint pain. Okay. Um, anything, questions on any of these kind of examples I gave for different health conditions? Yes. Um, does the prolotherapy work for all age groups? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, degenerative you know, issues as well? Degenerative? Absolutely. You know, as the body ages, its ability to, to heal becomes less, you know. So, for example, someone that's older that has osteoarthritis, I'd be certainly more apt to recommend prolotherapy right off the bat. Whereas someone that's younger, maybe a teen that just had some acute trauma, say, hmm, their body has a good, strong ability to heal. It's a recent injury. Let's see what the body can do on its, on its own. But it still it can be appropriate. For all joints? So yeah, essentially any joint. Every joint has ligamentous tissue that holds that joint in place. If you get any trauma or just wear and tear that stretches out some of those ligaments and doesn't hold that joint into its normal motion, you can get some unusual movement and that can cause the, the wear and tear which causes the pain. So we're trying to tighten those ligaments back up and hold that joint back into place. Mm -hmm. Is it a series of injections? <clears throat> yeah. And then once you get to the point where you back in health, do you have to continue that? Mm -hmm. So typically when I do it on people, we recommend doing at least three treatments and they're between one to three weeks apart. And if you don't get at least 50% improvement after three treatments, then I'd say, hmm, maybe Prolo's not working and we'll have to decide to go forward. But at that point, depending on the level of improvement, you can say, hmm, that's good enough. Or if you need to do few more to maybe get some more improvement. And it just really depends on the patient. Sometimes I have a patient that comes back in six months, so oh, I need another one to kind of tune it up a little bit, or some people can go for a year or two and not have anything. It just really depends on the patient. Okay. We at least like to give it a, you know, two to three just to see how good it can work. And my estimate is about 80% of the patients I work with get at least 50% improvement in pain. Can you give five examples of different places you've treated? Yes. Yeah. So it's very good in, in knee osteoarthritis. There'll be plenty of people that are nearing joint replacement surgery. And I would always say, give prolotherapy a try to see what benefit you can get before going down that road. So knee's a very common place. Um, shoulder pain, uh, back pain, um, cervical pain, perhaps associated with migraines, um, hip pain. Um, I mean, really any, any joint. So. Uh, wrist, yes. Yeah, but I do it typically more for non-inflammatory oh, okay. joint pain. Okay. okay. <laughs> okay, <coughs> questions are good. Any more? Have you heard of uh, amniotherapy where people are taking actually stem cells from maybe a uh, placenta mm -hmm. or something and injecting in different parts of the body for natural healing? Is okay. considered a natural path? Yeah, so I have I've heard of that. I have not heard of, of amnio stem cells for prolotherapy, but there was one kind of prolotherapy called PRP, where you draw the patient's own blood, you centrifuge it down, right. and you pull off a particular part of the blood. 
because what you're trying to do with regular polo, what you're trying to do is cause some irritation there that brings the body to bring more blood into the area and bring more things that can heal up the tissue. When you draw the person's own blood and spin it down, you're actually injecting back into them the stuff you're trying to draw there in the first place. So it's kind of a more aggressive type procedure. But again, you're using their own tissue to stimulate the healing mechanism. Like a concentrated version of it's a, a constant, yes, a, exactly, that's a good one. Yeah, so uh, <coughs> often you hear it called as PRP, it stands for platelet-rich plasma. So it's an enriched platelet plasma that you eject back into the blood. Well, well, you're really stimulating the body to heal itself using whether it is, the basic prolo uses an irritant solution. So the solution itself doesn't do the healing. It just stimulates the body to, to, to heal itself. And these other things like PRP or the stem cell, you're taking their own cells and putting them back in, and that's kind of accelerating that healing process. So to me, it's very naturopathic in a sense you are trying to stimulate the body's own ability to heal, as opposed to a steroid, which is just suppressing inflammation and suppressing pain, or things like diclofenac or Voltaren or non-steroidal anti-inflammatories that are suppressing pain and inflammatory pathways, which temporarily give you benefit, but down the road they're not solving what's causing it in the first place. So if someone has a disc problem, you know, the discs that are in your vertebrae, the only reason they have a problem is because there's been some mechanical change in the structure of that spine. If that mechanical change is because you have some laxity of ligaments, which is most likely the case, prolotherapy can certainly help kind of restore that structure. I mean, it's not going to repair a disc, a, a disc or a, that, has been, that has been flattened or, um, you know, it depends on the degree of the mechanical change. <coughs> sure. Right. So. You know, kind of prolotherapy and steroid injection therapy are kind of working opposite of each other. So the steroids really suppresses the body's healing ability and prolotherapy, we're trying to stimulate it. So you never do both at the same time. So if I was ever to do prolotherapy to a joint, I always have to ask, well, when have you last had a steroid injection? So they have to be off of the steroid for at least several months. Well, one of the, one of the first things for almost every patient leaves my office after the first visit is a diet diary. And it's a seven day, they write down everything they eat and I tell them, write down whatever you eat. This is about the only time I'll tell you it's okay to have McDonald's seven days if that's what you normally eat. So I want to see what the normalized diet is like. And then we come back on the second visit and we go through. And it kind of depends on the patient. If there's a lot of opportunity in that diet diary to fix things, we'll spend a lot of time there. Or if I get a diet diary back, it's like, hmm, this is pretty good. We just need to tweak a few things. Then it just really depends on every patient. But because as a naturopath, I believe diet is such a common component of most uh, chronic health conditions, I always start there. The Absolutely. And in fact, I probably should have prefaced a little bit in my talk kind of where I practice and what I do. So um, I work on the Scottsdale side of town with a rheumatologist, um, Paul Howard. He's a well-known rheumatologist in town. So I do a lot with autoimmune conditions there. Um, then I work on the west side of town. And you'll see on that handout there, I've got kind of two little cards there. Um, it's just a private naturopathic practice. And I'm there one day a week. And I'm <laughs> just kind of doing anything from autoimmunity to diabetes to high blood pressure to knee pain, whatever. So yeah, any naturopath, you know, they will certainly have their area of expertise, whether it is treatment modalities or types of conditions they work with. But yeah, we have no problem to refer out. And especially like when I work with autoimmune conditions, I'm very fortunate I have a, na a rheumatologist right next door to me that I can, we go back and forth. We kind of joke back and forth that he works with the patients that want a lot of drug and a little bit of herb. And I work with patients that want a lot of herb and a little bit of drug, so. And I must be upfront, there's some patients that naturopathic medicine is not appropriate because I require the patient to be involved with their care, to do diet diaries, do questionnaires. If I'm gonna say, hey, do some exercise or come to into one wellness and work with Carl to get the routine together, they have to want to do that. And if they don't wanna put any more effort into where's my pill, then I say I can't help you much, so.